Now the cardiac output is the volume of blood ejected by each ventricle per minute and is product of stroke volume and heart rate. Cardiac output can thus be manipulated by alteration in heart rate or heart rhythm. Preload, contractility and afterload also count in it. Thermodilution methods using pulmonary artery catheter is still date the considered as a gold standard method. Now there are various methods of cardiac output monitoring based on fixed principle thermodilution, Doppler, ultrasound, pulse contour analysis and bioimpedance. An ideal cardiac output monitor should be one minimally or invasive, be non-invasive or should be continuous, should be cost effective, should be reproducible and reliable during various physiological states and have fast response time. Now the pulmonary artery catheterization is a procedure which uses a long thin tube called a catheter inserted into a pulmonary artery. It can help diagnose and manage a wide variety of health problems. The pulmonary arteries are the two major arteries coming from the right ventricle of the heart. This lower chamber of the heart contains blood that is low in oxygen. The pulmonary arteries carry this blood to the lungs and there the blood picks up more oxygen and releases carbon dioxide in the lungs where it is excreted out into the air. The pulmonary artery catheterization procedure uses a catheter that has an inflatable balloon at its tip. The healthcare provider or your doctor puts this tube through a large vein and then the tube is then moved to the right atrium which is one of the heart's upper chamber and carry and then it is moved on through to the right ventricle and through a pulmonary artery. The doctor, your doctor or the health care provider will then inflate the balloon and wedge it into a small pulmonary blood vessel. With catheter in place, the operator can learn more about pressure in the right side of the heart and in the arteries of the lungs. Blood samples can then also be taken at various sites within the heart to understand blood oxygen flow. The procedure can help also tell other important details such as heart output and the findings that can help in treating many health conditions. Understanding of the underlying principles of the cardiac output, measuring devices help in knowing limitations of the use and allows more effective and safer utilization. At present, no single cardiac output monitoring device can meet all the clinical requirements considering the limitation of the diverse cardiac output monitoring techniques. So the evidence of minimally invasive cardiac output monitoring is usually conflicting. However, the different cardiac output monitoring devices may be used during clinical course of patients such as integrated approach based on their invasiveness and the need for the additional hemodynamic data. These devices help provide numerical form of information for anesthesia guys and the ICU specialists to use it in determining the most appropriate management for the patient at present. They do not completely prohibit but do increasingly limit the use of pulmonary artery catheter. The major principles and techniques of uh, cardiac measurements are a uh, uh, few like the fixed principle, the indicator, dilution techniques that include thermal dilution and pulse dye, densimetry, lithium dilution technique, then there are arterial waveform techniques, transthoracic impedance and bioreactance analysis. Now here we have to study like uh, Yes, uh, but the Doppler's ultrasound is also used very uh, good and uh, on hand availability for measuring the cardiac output. Now here we will be studying a bit about partial gas rebreathing. This is also known as the NICO system which uses the partial gas rebreathing monitor and uses indirect fixed principle to calculate cardiac output. It is used in intubated patients under mechanical ventilation and at steady state, the amount of cardiac output entering the lungs via the pulmonary artery is proportional to the cardiac output and equals the amount exiting the lungs via expiration and pulmonary veins. Now, Adolf Eugen Fick in 1870 had actually first described a method of measuring cardiac output in humans by measuring and calculating the total uptake of or release of oxygen by lungs in, in uh, or release of oxygen of these uh, from these lungs is actually the product of blood flow through the lungs and difference in the arterial and the venous oxygen content. According to th this hypothesis, the cardiac output uh, is uh, calculated by an equation where the cardiac output is equal to the percentage of oxygen consumption divided by the difference between the arterial 
and mix venous content and uh, although this technique is very accurate and it is used in cardiac catheterization laboratories it is not practical for bedside use or continuous cardiac output monitoring now there are system that utilizes a modification of fixed principle using carbon dioxide to obtain cardiac output measurements in intubated sedated and mechanically ventilated patients the monitor consists of pro, pro, properly disposable rebreathing loop that is attached to ventricular circuit ventilator circuit sorry and a main stem mainstream infrared carbon dioxide sensor a disposable air flow sensor and the pulse oximeter now here the carbon dioxide production as a result of body metabolism is calculated as a product of carbon dioxide concentration and air flow during a rebreathing cycle and arterial carbon dioxide content is derived from the entitled carbon dioxide with the adjustment for the slope of carbon dioxide dissociation curve and the degree of dead space ventilation the attached rebreathing loop generates a partial rebreathing state every 3 minutes that results in increased entitled carbon dioxide content and reduced carbon dioxide elimination The difference between normal and rebreathing ratios is used to calculate cardiac output with the assumption that cardiac output does not change significantly between normal and rebreathing states. This allows the emission of various carbon dioxide content measurement which is required in the fixed equation. Now there are several limitations to this technique of calculating or device due to various requirements such as intubation, mechanical ventilation with a fixed ventilator setting. minimal gas exchange abnormal abnormalities so the technique may only be applied in mechanically ventilated patients with relatively stable hemodynamics now here let's discuss about indicated dilution techniques uh, or thermodilution as well here the thermodilution is the most popular dil dilution method used for measuring the cardiac output in clinical settings uh, actually the information obtained during this procedure is re is relevant in the process of clinical decision making in patients with critical illness valvular heart disease or congestive heart failure it is form of indicated dilution technique and uh, actually involves administration of cold saline solution in the proximal part of the pulmonary artery catheter the resultant temperature drop is measured near the catheter tip introduced it was introduced in 1970s the, the pulmonary artery catheter measurement is considered as a gold standard after a predetermined amount of cold saline is injected in the proximal part of the pulmonary artery catheter now the thermal variations of the blood are measured the cardiac output and the indices are then derived using the thermodilution curve generated using calculations based on stuart hamilton equation which is also running on your screen right now you can see it If you inject a known amount of substance upstream, the change in its concentration downstream is related to the rate of flow. A known volume of indicator is added to the stream of the blood. The concentration of the indicator as it passes by the detect detector can be plotted as a curve of concentration over time. The flow of volume over time in this case is the cardiac output. Where uh, while using the indicator dye technique, the known substance, which is usually endocyanin green, a benign dye which is strongly protein bound and has a very rapid hepatic clearance, is used. It uh, the hepatic clearance is usually around about 150 seconds. Data from this measured concentration curve can then be used to plug into Stuart Hamilton equation, and uh, cardiac output is uh, figured out. which is uh, usually the cardiac output e equaling the amount of indicator dye with the amount calculated in moles divided by the in integral of the indicator concentration over time which is actually the area under the concentration curve there are many sources of error using this technique including temperature and volume of the injected solution the timing during the respiration the rate of injection presence of shunts cardiac valvular abnormalities moreover the misinterpretation of the data is or obtain is most common cause leading to complications there have been many complications that have been attributed to the invasiveness of the pulmonary artery catheterization leading to significant mortality and morbidity morbidity therefore the pulmonary artery catheter should be restricted to the to use uh, to be used in patients with cardiac failure and the patients with pulmonary hypertension or requiring titration of pulmonary vasodilator therapy now the transpulmonary thermodilution 
has been used in an attempt to attain accuracy of the pulmonary artery catheter thermodilution while avoiding its complications. Cold saline is injected into the superior vena cover through a central venous catheter. An arterial cannula is placed in a major artery which may be femoral, axillary or brachial which has an integral thermist or the temperature rating device. It measures the change in blood temperature and a computer software is used to plot a thermodilution curve of temperature over time. Cannulation through the femoral vein should be avoided at, as because it may result in overestimation of the intrathoracic blood volume. If the femoral vein is the site of planned venous excess, then the catheter should be placed on the contralateral side of the femoral artery, uh, femoral arterial catheter to avoid crosstalk phenomena, which is uh, like interference in actual reading at that moment. These monitors also calculate additional values such as global and diastolic volume, intrathoracic blood volume, extravascular lung water, and pulmonary vascular permeability index from transpulmonary thermodilution. Now here also a number of potential sources of error have been identified. As compared to pulmonary artery catheter, catheter thermodilution technique, transpulmonary thermodilution is more vulnerable to errors due to drift and indicator recirculation yet vulnerable to errors due to respiratory variations. As pulmonary artery catheter thermodilution major right heart cardiac output whereas transpulmonary thermodilution measures the left heart cardiac output. So the presence of an intracardiac or intrapulmonary shunt will lead to different cardiac output measurements. The magnitude of error produced due to the valvular regurgitation cannot be predicted and depends on, on, uh, on the site and the severity of regurgitation. However, a high degree of correlation between the pulmonary artery catheterization and transpulmonary thermodilution has been established in various experimental and clinical settings, including cardiac surgery and intensive care with septic and burn patients. So the understanding of the cardiac output has been reported uh, due to indicator recirculation. Uh, they can be underestimations or we can say uh, like uh, alterations in studying the cardiac output of, of approximately 96 to 97 percent from the accuracy. The indicator present in the pulmonary arteries is recovered uh, in the aorta and the indicator recirculation means that the amount of cold injected solution that leaves the blood and enters the tissue and later re-enters the bloodstream and consequently the indicator loss in the lung especially in the patient with the pulmonary edema has been suggested as the, as the reason of poor uh, correlation in some studies. The, the effect of indicator loss and recirculation tend to cancel each other out. However, we, uh, which one of two parameters significant is actually remaining to be understood. Now let's discuss about the lithium dilution technique uh, which uh, determines the continuous real-time cardiac output changes based on the pulse power analysis through the pulse cardiac output algorithm uh, and uses lithium dilution for intermittent calibration. This method uses 0.5 to 2 milliliters of boruses or 0.15 millimoles per milliliter of lithium chloride to a maximum cumulative dose of 20 milliliters which is injected through a central or peripheral venous catheter and lithium concentration is here measured by a sensor attached to indwelling arterial cannula. The resulting uh, lithium concentration versus time curve is used to calculate the plasma flow using Stuart Hamilton equation. The correction here for the pack cell volume is the correction here is for the pack cell volume and is then applied to convert plasma flow into blood flow by dividing it, it by one pack cell volume. The lithium can generate a high signal to noise ratio since it does not naturally occur in plasma. It has a rapid redistribution time and an insignificant first pass loss from the circulation. On the contrary, in the patients with long term uh, lithium treatment have reduced accuracy over there. Furthermore, the presence of non depolarizing blocking agents, especially the atracurium and rocuronium, they lead to an overestimation of cardiac output due to cross reaction of these muscle relaxants with the lithium sensor at high peak doses. 
and in addition this technique is contraindicated in patients weighing less than 40 kg and during the first trimester of pregnancy lithium dilution uh, in cardiac output measurement has shown good correlation with pulmonary artery catheter thermodilution techniques in normal and hyperdynamic patients so uh, the, the other technique that is used uh, is uh, arterial waveform uh, analysis which is actually a pulse contour analysis which is based on the principle that area under the systolic part of the arterial pressure waveform is proportional to the stroke uh, volume and cardiac output was proportional to the arterial pulse pressure. In this method, the area is measured by the post diastole to end of ejection phase divided by the aortic impedance and measures the stroke volume. It also measures the stroke uh, ventricular volume and pulse pressure, stroke uh, ventricular variations and uh, pulse pressure variations which is useful in predicting fluid responsiveness stroke volume variation is the difference between the maximum and minimum stroke volume over the respiratory cycle and is caused by the changes in preload with alteration in intrathoracic pressure so uh, in 1904 a concept actually arose and it centered around a theory that fluctuation in the blood pressure or the pulse height is around a mean value are proportional to the volume of the blood force in the arterial conduit by each systole or the contraction of the heart. In this technique, the pulse pressure analysis and the arterial waveform obtained from the arterial catheter or a finger probe which is used to calculate the stroke volume and the systemic vascular resistance. So a major drawback of this technology is the fact that the compliance of aortic wall is non-linear non and it is not stable as uh, age is related. The more you age, the more the, uh, disruption happens. These prevent any straightforward correlations of pressure to volume. In 1983, there was also a development of an a logarithm to compensate for the aortic wall compliance non-linear approach and this made uh, the calculation of stroke volume possible by integrating the area under the systolic phase of the arterial waveform curve and subsequently several methods based on model representing the systemic circulation were developed for stroke volume estimation. The approaches are gen generically referred to as the pulse contour analysis. The good arterial waveform quality is a prerequisite for accurate reading of cardiac output and uh, accuracy here is affected in patients with significant arrhythmias and uh, morbid obesity. Various studies have validated that the efficacy of the flow track with pulmonary artery catheter have, uh, have good correlation. However, in patients with uh, low stro uh, stroke volume resistance undergoing liver transplantation or septicemia, it is not found that uh, pulmonary artery catheterization uh, is, is uh, like it is not as accurate as pulmonary artery catheterization. Now the other method that is used is uh, thoracic bioimpedance. The thoracic bioimpedance is actually a non-invasive method of cardiac output monitoring. It is based on the hypothesis by considering that the thorax as a cylinder is perfused with a fluid with specific resistivity. So the electrodes which are actually 6 in number are placed uh, 2 on either side of the neck and 4 on the low thorax on the patient and the resistance to the current flowing from the outermost to the innermost electrodes is measured. The bioimpedance uh, is indirectly proportional to the content of the thoracic fluid. So the tissue fluid volume, pulmonary and the venous blood and the aortic blood volume all contribute to the thoracic bioimpedance measurement. And changes in the cardiac output will change the amount of aortic blood and will be reflected, ref, uh, reflected as a, a change in the thoracic uh, bioimpedance measurements. So the major limitation uh, here are interference with the electrocautery, proper electrode placement, patient's movement and arrhythmias may affect its accuracy. So the results actually were not that accurate or maybe they not that encouraging with critically ill patients. Moreover, it has been considered as a trend analysis monitor rather than a diagnostic one. So we move towards the esophageal Doppler where Doppler's ultrasound technique major, it's a basically ultrasound technique that is used to measure the cardiac output. Here the mid thoracic level measures the flow as it is presumed to be parallel to the descending aorta. 
Since aorta is uh, considered as a surrender, the flow can be measured by multiplying the cross-sectional area and the velocity of the blood going through the aorta. The Doppler ultrasound is used to, used to measure the stroke volume, but the lim major limiting factor here is that the major it measures the flow in descending thor thoracic aorta, which is 70% of the total blood flow. So a correction of factor needs to be added to compensate for the aortic arch flow. Moreover, discrepancies in the flow may be seen in aortic co-optation, aneurysm and cross clamp. Intrathoracic blood pressure or various metabolic states are also a problem here. So the various factors like changes in the pulse pressure, vascular compliance, volume status or inotropes may also affect the major cross-sectional area as well. So the Doppler technique is used to measure the cardiac output by Simpson's rule here. By measuring the stroke volume, then it is multiplied by the heart rate. Like if you multiply the heart uh, rate where, where how much it is beating per minute and multiply it with the stroke volume by each beat, you can get the cardiac output. Flow is measured uh, by the area under the Doppler's velocity waveform that gives the velocity time interference and uh, this technique is, has been mostly been used in clinics right now but uh, there have been many corrections to it. Hopefully uh, the lecture might have uh, induced some thoughts on the cardiac output measurement. Do like and subscribe uh, if you uh, find it uh, helpful. Thank you. Take care.